Hello, welcome to Badook Movies. This week we have another episode about a master player, or to be more exact, two master players. Uh, Fang Xiping is the first master player, and he was born in 1709 in Haining, China. Just one year later, Shi Dang An was born in the same town. That was quite a coincidence. And these two players were to become great rivals, but also friends. The father of Fang Xiping was addicted to Go, and he brought the strongest players from all over China to his town to teach his son. By the age of 12, Fang Xiping has surpassed all his teachers and went on to become one of the strongest Chinese players of all time. Let's see a master game between these two boys. In these times, it was normal to have this starting position. And White was the first to play a move. Oh yes, I remember this from the Huang Longshi games. Yeah, we got a comment there that uh, White plays first in those times. Very nice. Thank you for the information. Yeah. Um, this is a bit in unusual, but... Uh, in that well. time, also very usual. Also, this move, right? We've seen this uh, quite a lot yes. of times. Yes, it's like a, a pincer to pincer the two stones in the corner, the two black stones, so they're under pressure a bit. And this this point uh, seems to come back all the time. Yes. Like, uh, for example, also this move is yeah. on the same spot. They really like this point. Yeah. I think also because it uh, makes a Mi situation. Black can uh, extend to the right or to the left side. Ah, I see, yes. Um. Yeah, again, again the move. same point. Whoa, <laughs> uh, and whoa, not again. No, <laughs> <laughs> they uh, yeah figured something else out here. Okay, Shi Ding An is white, by the way, so he plays uh, this move. Yeah, and Fan Shi Ping is black. Uh, so now black did jump here. This uh, looks a bit strange to me. Yes, I think in um, more modern go uh, in. Invading the corner would be uh, more usual. Yes, I, I would play this myself as well. And, um, well, we get this standard uh, Jussie key. Mm -hmm. And here it's okay, I think, right? Because the, the one white stone on the right looks a bit strange, but you can uh, extend from it. Yes, the Kakari by white looks good here. This jump looks a bit strange because uh, black does not have a good invasion point at the uh, top. Um, when white just uh, answers here, then uh, this is uh, way too small, an it extension. It looks uh, cramped. Yeah, and jumping like this is a bit uh, vague and loose, and uh, it leaves a big hole in uh, black's position. So this is uh, an old move. Yeah, but uh, this uh, is actually the game. And this is a very interesting move, I think. Yes, I think so too. Uh, in modern Go, you always see this jump, which is very solid and very calm. Yeah, or the more low uh, jump, the yeah. Kema, exactly. on the third line. But um, this Kema on the fifth line is very creative. And yeah. uh, I would like to play this in my games. Uh, yeah, me too. I think I will try it sometime too. It looks a little bit like uh, another Josuki that uh, starts on the 3-4 point. Here white has a stone on a 3-4 point, and when black approaches low, white can pincer, and then play a similar move like what happened in the game. We will show two possible continuations. Those are two Josuki's. Black can play here or here. Let's first see this one. This uh, Jossi key is uh, very basic, but there's a trick in it. This is a normal move, and then black has to come back to fix his shape. This is the normal Jossi key. But at this point, white does not have to jump. White can also play this tricky move, and if black simply extends, he is tricked. Let's see what happens. White can cut here. And we can expect the following sequence. I will go a bit more slow so you can understand what's happening. 
Black tries to free his stone here. And it looks like uh, he's going to succeed. Because he can capture this one white stone on the second line. But then white squeezes. And takes the stone. This is a painful result for black. He can connect underneath later. But uh, white has thickness on the outside. So this is better for white. How about if uh, black blocks from the other side? Like this? Yeah. Yes, this uh, looks a bit better maybe, but uh, it also doesn't work. Because uh, black will simply be cut off. And this is also a good result for white. So, if uh, white plays this tricky move, you cannot respond with the normal extension. This is actually the proper move. You need to uh, strengthen yourself first. Yes, it looks like you're pushing from behind, which is normally bad, but here it's necessary so that you defend your cutting point, and this is an even result for both. And uh, playing the Hane on top of three stones, like uh, here? Yes, this is also possible. This is another Joseki, and Black will gain strength on the right side, so he will have the advantage here. But uh, White also got the Hane uh, at the top. So he has more strength uh, in that area, and it's also uh, a possibility to play like this. Okay. In this position, black can also play another Joseki. Instead of playing here, he can also pincer immediately and force white to go out on this side, and then get a natural flow to play at the top. Uh, white needs to protect his cut here. And um, yeah, we get uh, something like this. So black got a group on the right side and at the top, but uh, white got the corner and also something at the top. Okay, we got sidetracked a bit, but let's get uh, back to the game. White plays this um, weird move, or at least it's weird now. It used to be a normal move. And now black pushes. What do you think of this move? Yeah, I think that's normally painful, right? Because you don't want to push from behind. No, true. I, uh, it would be very hard for me to play such a move. But uh, Black is looking forward to attack here. So that's why he strengthens his stones at the right first. Right. And then he attacks. So what does White do now? Jump out? Yeah, White uh, jumps out. This uh, aims at the corner invasion. So if uh, black also goes out, then white is looking forward to uh, invade here. I see. And this would be a bit painful for black. We can uh, expect such a result. Yes. And um, yeah, black is uh, very heavy. And also the stone at A still has a lot of potential. It looks like white is uh, trying to connect to that stone. Yeah, and uh, I think he uh, yeah, has a big chance of doing so. Okay, and what if um, instead of extending for black here, uh, he blocks? Yes, I think uh, this is maybe even a bit worse, because uh, white still has a cutting point. Uh, black has a cutting point, you mean? Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, white can cut here. And uh, because of the white stone at A, the ladder is good for him. Oh yeah. So um, in the game, when uh, white jumped here, black uh, defended the corner. And um, this move is quite nice because it not only defends, but it also aims to connect underneath. Yes, so uh, immediately white prevents this. Which is another move that has many meanings. So you can see that um, if you're really strong at Go, you want to do as many things as possible with one move. This white Kozumi doesn't only uh, prevent the connection of black underneath, but it also aims to attack later at A. The corner is not secure yet. Right. But black does not have time to secure his corner now, and he goes out with his uh, single stone, and also attacks white stone. And now a big fight is about to start. After uh, this uh, white's move, it's normal to jump, I think, here. 
Yes, this is the normal shape. Note, however, that White has a nice tasuchi here for connecting underneath. Uh, it is maybe not good to play this immediately, but uh, later this could uh, get into play. You want to uh, time this very perfectly, because black will get strong now. But if you would really like to connect underneath, then uh, this is a nice tasuji. You can rescue your three stones at the right. We have some uh, pro games in the bonus tab, where there's some uh, yeah where this tasuji is played. To give you an idea when you can play the tsuji, let's see a common opening where this can occur. When white approaches the corner here, black can start a fight. White jumps out and black has to return in the corner. And white can keep fighting with this move. Here black uh, plays the Kozumi, like uh, what happened in the game between Fang Shiping and Shi Ding An. This can be expected and now white fights back. And black plays the uh, jump again. And the shape move. And here white can play the tsuji. But again, you have to be careful not to play this too quickly. In this situation it's normal to uh, first lean on the black stone. And then jump away. And this group by white is quite settled. Or it's not uh, that weak. White has a lot of uh, potential to go into the center. But later... If the stones uh, would be very much pressured and the weak uh, and the white group would be weak, then you could decide to play here to rescue your three stones and to connect underneath. And the drawback of this is that black can uh, also separate one stone of white, so he gets quite thick and strong on the upper side. So you have to be careful not to play this too quickly. Well, we got a bit sidetracked again, so let's uh, go back to the game and let's see how this Tsunji actually works. What if black plays here? Black cannot connect, white will cut off the stones, and uh, the black stones will be captured. Black has a lack of liberties here and uh, he's in big trouble. In the game, uh, black played here. So this means that uh, Tsuchi at A no longer works. Maybe that's why he played this instead of the yeah, more shape move at, uh, at this point. I see. So here if uh, white plays at A, he cannot uh, connect anymore? No, black can just solidly connect and uh, white has uh, nothing. What about if he plays on the second line? Uh, here this does not work either because uh, black can cut and uh, white has nothing. Oh yes, this is very bad. Okay, let's have a look at the rest of the game. White defends the corner here and starts to take away the eyes of the black uh, group on the right side. And the fight continues. But now there is some Aji in the corner and black plays a nice probing move. If white answers here, then later black can uh, play here to create uh, some more eye shape for his group. So um, to play more aggressively and to yeah to hunt the black group, white uh, descends here in the game. Black needs to escape, and so does white. After this cut, White found a nice Tasuchi again. This is the same Tasuchi we talked about earlier. And now it works again. Because uh, Black played here in the game, but White can cut here now. Nice. So a big exchange followed. This is a leaning attack, I think. Yeah, White peeps here. But uh, black does not have time to answer. White peeps to uh, protect his cut. But um, black has no time to answer. And white cuts off three stones of uh, black. Uh, now black plays here. And um, if uh, white blocks, 
then black has a nice move here. And uh, this would be very hard for a white. Yes, it looks like white is dead. So um, when black plays here, uh, white has no time to defend here. So he uh, protects his weakness here. Oh, but this seems very painful. Black can just slice through. Yeah, I think this result is very good for a black. I think so too. So the Tsuji didn't really help white too much. No. From this point on, there was a big fight in this area of the board, which later spread all over the board. Let's see another few moves in this area. This is a very beautiful and calm move, I think. Do you agree with me, uh, Peter? Yes, it looks like a very good shape. If uh, black tries other things, then he will end up in bad shape. Yes, this for example would be uh, very painful. Empty triangle, very bad shape. This is not good and this is also not good uh, by black. White can Hane and afterwards play this Hane and black doesn't have a good follow-up. It's uh, even more painful than the previous situation. And to play this kind of move is, uh, is very nice. It looks very simple and maybe a bit strange even. But it's the proper shape move. And our next pro episode will be about this. How not to make bad shape and find these kind of simple but uh, good moves. Also note that the reason why this is a good move is that uh, when white plays here, black does not need to come back to protect his cut, but can jump out instead. If white tries to cut, he will end up with a lack of liberties. White can't cut here. White ends with a big dango and black and Atari from this side. Capturing all the white stones. Yeah. Uh, black could also cut here, but this leaves the opportunity for white to play here. It's another Tsuji. Yeah, it's a very famous one. It's called the Crane's Nest. So uh, black can't go out because, uh, yeah, he will be captured like this. After black played this solid shape move in the game, white responded by playing on the second line. Also very solid. Yes, it looks a bit strange because white is already alive there, but if uh, white plays Tanuki, this is very big for black. When black plays this Kozumi, it's a nice uh, timing. If white comes back in the corner, black can jump and he has yeah, almost two eyes, he's quite safe. This would be a bit too easy for black. Instead of uh, coming back in the corner, white could also keep the pressure on, but this would leave a very big point in the corner for black. And it's difficult for white to find a good answer. If white just connects, he will die. Black can play this uh, tricky one. And white... Uh, has only two liberties, he's dead in the corner. If white plays on this side, black can cut and white also has only two liberties. So at this point, white cannot connect. White can play here to make a co. But this is a flower co for black. And uh, this is a great uh, result. The rest of the game continued with uh, big fighting. And uh, if you like fighting, then check out the game. And I uh, hope to see you next time.